If you clicked on this, you're probably thinking to yourself, how do I access unlimited creativity? How do I get out of a creative block? How do I feel inspiration or experience inspiration even when I don't necessarily feel it? So in this podcast, I sit down with professional artist, John Milan, who has been creating art since he was two years old, and he's been doing it professionally for the last 30 years or so, sold over 10,000 paintings, and it's an absolutely fascinating discussion. It is a non linear podcast, meaning you will not necessarily get the answers that you think you're going to get, uh, but it is very interesting. It's a lot of fun, and I hope that you enjoy. My name is Jake Dunn. This is the Light Movement Podcast, where we discuss how you can be successful as an artist without selling your soul to the dark art elitist system. John Milan, my father-in-law, the most interesting man alive. Um, what a compliment. <laughs> How do you go about accessing unlimited creativity? The first thing I do is I create a blank canvas in my thoughts and I get myself very centered in. And I can go to a certain place within my memory and recall imagery from the past. And I can show people how to do it. So are you, do you have like a, a like a, a ritual or like a process that you like to go through in order to come up with new ideas? What I do is I look out into the world of art. So I, I have a lot of favorite painters in the world. I don't want to mimic them, but they do inspire me. So it just sparks something. So when your imagination gets sparked, you want to write these ideas down, even if it's a rough sketch, and you also can bounce your ideas off individuals. So what do you think I do like 20 robots and one of them is having rainbows coming out of the toaster? You know, you, you kind of bounce the idea and everyone says, no, I'd say just one toaster. You know, they, they kind of can steer your decision one way. So if you have a sketchbook and you get really wild in there, you can just write them all down and you can reach into that book hmm. and get one at any time. Okay. So you have a sketchbook full of ideas. Um, now the sketchbook could be in your mind and you could go back to that place in your mind that has all the ideas. If they're powerful enough, they are going to stay with you. And I have some of those that are just burned into memory. So what I think is that we, we start off very, very young, uh, drawing the sunshine and the clouds and the ground, and everyone does the same thing. And then we say, well, how can we make it more interesting? And you try to take it a little further a pathway, you know, windy pathway. Things are getting smaller. Things are larger up front. Um, what's on the pathway? You know, other people might stay, oh, just sunshine and palm trees. I'm going for a swim. But you might, okay, how many palm trees can I fit inside here? You might take things farther, you know. Hmm. So it, it feels almost like ideas materialize out of thin air for you. Like you're able to somehow synthesize when something doesn't seem like it's there. Is it, is it all the time? Do you feel like you have moments that are more creative than others or? It is most of the time. And there are times when you can have severe down time hmm. where you, you, you need inspiration. You have to get it. Say you're going to venture into photography and you might want to look at things in a different way. How is it going to look through the camera? So you also want to do that with your drawings. You, you want to place it in there in a design form and never have a triangle on the corner or uh, two things too symmetrical. It, they, they, you never say never, but you can sometimes say never. Hmm. You want to uh, com constantly keep getting inspired. And so if you can find fun tricks to do that, are you asking me what those tricks are? Say you're wanting to create a stick figure, but you don't want it to be boring. These are the kind of things that ideas that strangers will throw at you. They say, oh, I can only draw a stick figure. And you, then you all, all of a sudden you say, well, what if you had 
50 stick figures and they were all rolling a ball up a hill. And then, you know, you, you could come up with some creative solution where the person could now visualize themselves making art, um, doing stick figures in a big way. Just at any time, just play a game in your mind, just have fun with it. Uh, does anyone ever come to you and say that? All I do is, I can't draw a straight line. All I do is... I've heard that so many times. Draw ovals. Like I can't draw circles. I draw ovals. Yeah. <laughs> I can't draw circles. <laughs> Drawing circles is hard, though. I mean, that's why you just flip a cup over and trace it. <laughs> Use the tools every time. <laughs> so... um do you have like a method for gathering or collecting or it, well, it sounded like before you said that you use your sketchbook. How do you, what does your sketchbook practice look like? Okay. Well, I like to take it as far as I can into miniature patterns, details, hieroglyphic shapes, things that are going to spark memories for others as well as myself. So I think of all these elements going into a small space and still having open space. How can I fit the pieces of the puzzle to make the painting or drawing function? And that's what I push myself to do. So it, when I go to make a larger piece, I will have all that information there. It's as if it's a blueprint. Hmm. I see. So you're, you're kind of mapping out ahead of time the bigger paintings that or creations that you want to work on through the sketchbook. Is there like a filtering process for like, okay, um, I did a sketch of this. I don't really love it so much. I'm not going to yes. do a painting. It could take 10 pages before you find one that's usable. Hmm. Are there, is there any criteria that you use or is it just kind of like the feeling of the sketch? It, you're like, you know what? I would want to do that again. Yes, you can. And then the next time you do it, it's a little easier. How often do you like to duplicate your sketches? Uh, lately, I've been going for about s seven to ten times. Really? Wow. So it's a reoccurring image? Hmm. That's smart. Like a motif kind of throughout different paintings. I was waiting for this question because I like to... Um, go about a talk show or a a series of questions with other questions and answers. But I still want to be clear. Mm -hmm. It's not that I'm playing chess. I just it, find it really fascinating. The questions, they never stop. So when it comes to making art, getting your ideas together, if you repeat your idea a few times over, you think someone's going to catch on. They're seeing I'm, I'm drawing it over and over. But when it comes to the final one that looks the best, if you sold five or six of those and you're on your seventh one, you're not going to really feel bad. It's not like an exact replica, you know. What do you think? Do you feel bad when you sell the same one? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 really. <laughs> I have fun with it. I, I could say this was a series of these. Mm. So I'm going to use a tree, for instance. I've been doing these types of trees for about 15 years. And now I'm not tired of them at all, but I can recreate them. It, so that's not seven to 10. That's more like a hundred mm -hmm. by now. Uh, so I was using the tree imagery to keep me going through hard times. So I'd be doing some really large paintings and then I'd have a few days of free time to think while things are drying or while ideas are in, in motion, things are stopped. Say if I'm doing a collaboration piece and it's somewhere else and then I can do two or three trees in that time. So I'm, I'm constantly just making a game for myself. So I would do all in red, all in green, all in blue. Hmm. So you like, you like to, you have self-imposed limitations basically in order to foster more creativity. Mm -hmm. That's right. Tell me about your artistic process as if I knew nothing. Like I didn't, I don't know you whatsoever. Like how do you go about creating a painting from start to finish? I enjoy drawing with the most primitive tools that you can use. And so I always have fun during the whole process and I just 
try new things adding to that you think how many different materials can you add but you can do silver leaf gold leaf copper leaf you can paint on top of that have metallic reflections you can uh, so i like to do oil paint over these drawings so they do get covered over and if i bring it to from pen to brush it could take a lot longer for those process and i do um, sell those for more just they may take a year instead of just a couple of weeks hmm. so a pen you know or um, a water brush compared to an oil paint brush i mean there's going to be a big difference there's just worlds within there that to to find out so say you're going along with your oil painting you splash some mineral spirits in there you got mud and bubbles and everything you get you could turn those into galaxies and atmospheres. You just try new things. So you rely a lot on like the actual materials themselves to kind of guide the creative process and help you figure out different pathways to take when you're actually creating. Yeah. Um, do you make sources? I know, you know, Ellie and Dimitra and a lot of people make, I, I make sources. Yeah. It's, it's rare that mm -hmm. I do sources. If I'm trying to make something very realistic, uh, ancient Renaissance figure or um, or an actor or, or somebody that you would be recognizing, I, I will use a photographic source there. But what I really enjoy is making marks. And so there's a, a Japanese um, way of painting where you take this brush mark and it just constantly flows. And then that's your whole outline to work from. And I watch them do it. They attach the brush to a stick and they stand far away and they're they're moving like uh, uh, martial arts you know hmm. so I, I try to make up my own version of that oh that's so cool i've never thought about that so i'm using water soluble graphite for that so i have a square and the brush is very big and fluffy and it's pointed and it's japanese brushes and i hmm. wash around and turn them into things what is, do you know what the brushes are called or no I, there's many names for, but I, it's escaping me. Okay, like a calligraphy brush almost, but like bigger. Yeah, the more carved up, it, it, it in different shapes, they're better. So the ones I'm using are, they're like a flame to the side. Lately, mm. do you like street art? Spray paint. I do. I mean, I feel like there's so much variety within street art. You know, like there's more graphic um graffiti type street art and then i i really am drawn to figures that are rendered a bit more um within the street art or like a bit cleaner than i mean i don't know it's just i like um hmm like you know the artist human i think she does super cool street art street type art you know it's not exactly like what you would call street art but she does like murals and stuff outside and um you know I guess. good example but she has changed over the years yeah from that's being true. very real and then turning into more of a flame with the figures in a, a view of a diamond scope or something where you're seeing images coming off of another image uh, mm -hmm. multi-dimensional yeah do you have any favorite artists i'd say gregory euclid is a very big influence on me super and cool he, he's in the news lately a lot really he does a lot of circular things but a lot of organic plant like mm. shapes with lots of geometric castles and rivers and waterfalls then i used to love robert williams a lot he he did not robin williams robert williams <laughs> He does the magazine called Juxtapose, where he has a lot of artists that are on the darker side of things. But it's not that I'm craving that. I just like this special look that is like giant bunnies within a field and it's microscopic birds. And I mean, the way that those artists are doing things in L.A. and certain parts of the world they're they're coming up with this special way it's hard to describe more like made for hot rods you could put it on a giant model t ford or something hmm. and it's going to look good no matter what you paint there so i don't know why 
I've always been drawn to that. I, uh, I guess my father was into building cars and all that, and I, I never met him, but somehow through the genes, I'm, I'm crazy about cars. Hmm. Interesting. He was building all kinds of cars. Well, there's so many components that they're like to create a car. It's so intricate, you know, it's a, a mechanical work of art. And I mean, I could see the relation there with you and, but you can't know. you imagine them with just covered in paint, all these kind of fancy cars, they just need the paint jobs, you know, and it's not, <laughs> doesn't have to be like that for the whole car's lifespan. It could even be just one month. Now you can wrap a car, you can do it all. I just, I have to do it. That's one of my big dreams. So, mm. so a lot of these artists that are painting the cars and trucks and, and motorcycles, um, it's all airbrush and really high tech stuff. It's just one of, it's one of my dreams. I, I got to do it. I, Getting here to Florida, just kind of now um, scoping out all the cars and trucks and seeing what I can find. <laughs> so tell me about like the the difference in painting and drawing for you. Like I feel like painting, it feels, um, I don't know, for some reason painting is so much easier for me, but you make drawing seem so appealing, you know, like the way that you're able to just continuously create and create truly something out of nothing. You know, so many people say like, oh yeah, art is amazing because you're creating something out of nothing. But for me, like my process is like, okay, I'm looking at photography, whether it's a picture that I take myself or I'm finding inspiration online and then, you know, combining those different things together and then creating. So it's not really something out of nothing, but it's something out of something. But with you, you're actually drawing something out of nothing well i have to say on two more questions that you ask this one goes with those questions so say i do like mc escher he's did a lot of black and white kind of imagery now he would make things that were so specially done geometrically that they were continuous you know you could yeah around the page and he didn't do that much art in his career or you think of leonardo da vinci like all these guys that people really love their art they didn't do so much i mean they did beautiful interesting stuff but it, they weren't it prolific. either was burned in a fire i don't know if they lost all these pieces but i want to make as much as i can in the short time we have in this world i feel like pressed for time i have to get them out so i i do put a lot of hours in and i'm stockpiling all these hidden works that no one can ever see until later to later when unless they direct message me and it's gonna sell it for a nice price <laughs> um like how did you no develop, i never feel that how did you develop the skill of drawing out of your mind by studying artists who really went far in their imaginations i i made it my life's ambition i i just got every book I could find, every museum I could go to. I, I take it all in. It's like we we all don't realize what a short time we have to make the art we want to make. We we think we're going to put it off till later. We're going to do it later. But you, you just got to make it fast as you can before the idea is gone. So if you can capture those all those little ideas. It's like a building block. What do you think about the invention of the record player? I do not. I think it was revolutionary. I think it's so hard to imagine what it was like for artists before they were able to create with music. You know, like to me, I think, oh my gosh, music is just so readily available. It's so, I would say out of almost all art forms, it's the most, like it's everywhere, you know? Art is everywhere too. Writing is everywhere too. I mean, you can find any form of art everywhere, but music is something that like you can live with. You can experience the art from like a subconscious level while you're doing other things. I mean, having paintings on the wall, yes, but like if I'm facing this direction all day long, that paint, that painting over there is not going to affect me, you know, whereas if I have music on, it's just kind of enveloping you. So anyways, I, I think that to me, it is amazing to think about all these artists in the past and 
painters, I should say, or visual artists in the past who were creating without music. And I know a lot of artists like to create without music now, but I think there is a certain element of pushing beyond the boundaries that music gives you. Like when you you feel certain shapes, you feel movements, you feel colors. And when you hear a song and you're really listening to it, and to me, I can see like the organization of the song and like the, so anyways, the invention of record players, I think was probably one of the most important things to ever happen to music. Besides the iPod. Well, somebody just decided there's going to be little bumps and they're going to make sounds. And you you look at that circle and it's going to make a sound. I don't know how they did it. Like, somebody. Well, it was probably like it out. Alexander Graham Bell or I don't know, something. something because really they just figured out how to transmit sound through like using... Um, a crank. I don't And know. little bells and I'm little just, cranks and little... Someone on YouTube is going to watch us and be like, you don't know how it was actually made. And you're right, I don't. <laughs> but what I'm assuming is... <laughs> I ain't schooled none. <laughs> they had wires. <laughs> there are some wires up in there. And, and they figured out how to transmit kind of sound through wires. Horn they were speaker. Like, oh my gosh, sound is energy. Electricity is energy. All of a sudden. Like all of it, it is out. energy and we can transmit energy through objects. And so, oh, if we could transmit, you know, uh, something through this wire, well, you can't really sell wires for people. I don't know. <laughs> so you can never be bored. That's what my, my, that's my theory. You, there, you, you know, what would be a funny podcast is if we tried to guess how things were invented, having no clue. You know, like how it's made. Okay, <laughs> I, I won't like, go that far. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like drunk history. <laughs> like that would be so. Okay, funny, I, I do think. like this idea. Okay, so um, there, the, the question about <laughs> adding music to your art, um, it, it is so fascinating because if you were to add the element of live music and you get to paint and a live special chef there cooking for you on the scene and and you have you know a back masseuse come up and you just keep on painting and you have all Body these art. elements <laughs> and then you're getting fanned and you're in a hammock and you you just keep your art going you know you had all those elements you'd be creating a, like a whole world that what it looks like to continuous. paint as a king <laughs> yes <laughs> You just have this whole ensemble. You could recreate it for everyone. <laughs> As you squirt out paint every time Someone's you mix a color. Someone's making the paint for you right there <laughs> with tarot leaves. and you. As soon as you're done I'm getting a vision mixing of the color this. and you're like, I'm done with that. Someone comes up real quick and cleans the palette for you. Freezy so. needs more inks. <laughs> inks there, please. <laughs> no electricity, only candles. <laughs> um, if I wanted to develop the skill of drawing from my brain, like just from without, you know, looking at anything, just me and the paper, or let's say an iPad, you know, because infinite canvases and stuff. If I wanted to develop that skill, how would you say to go about it? Like, let's say I literally know nothing about drawing. If I think way back to when I started, I was using whatever materials I could find. So it was a lot of paper that would be for the typewriter or, or whatever. Then you would have newsprint was very less expensive. So you could get books of newsprint for a lot less, like $1 for big books. So I carried these all around, but they're not very archival. So then by doing hundreds and hundreds of drawings, I, I kept thinking, I got to get better materials one day stop using felt pens and all. I mean, they're fun, but felt you know, just melts and dries up and you could use permanent ink on nice archival paper and get the best result. So even if you take Phoenician plaster and you put that on a paper and smooth it with a spoon and you have the most beautiful surface, you need to think, what am I going to put in there that's so much fun 
So start off with swirlies. You know, swirlies lead into other things. Swirlies are super trendy, but uh, I never limit myself from not throwing in a few swirlies. And a swirly whirly could lead to a thingamajig. And that could lead to Lincoln logs, you know. You could be building some structures in there, throw some architecture in. Uh, I always think back to um, Leonardo da Vinci works. I studied his work so fully with all the browns and the ochres and the, I don't know if it's aged or what was he using. I don't, I'm not sure, but now you have the drawings and they're faded out in such a stylish way that he felt that was the best way to draw because everybody's going to love it. Look how I just have the building, the idea of the building, and that fades out. Hmm. Multi-trillion dollar piece right here, multi-billion over here. He didn't think of those numbers. He was up yeah. in the tower making them as fast as he could, but he he was thinking on a different level. So I try to put myself in that level at all times, and it helps me in life. So do you do you ever think about like money while you're creating or like or maybe a better question do you try to create specific do I think money pieces is evil? to sell <laughs> you, I think um, it's a tool you, okay it's a tool yeah do you but do you try to create pieces to sell or do you just paint or draw what you want to and very then... very good question so that's I like to have it all all built in there. <laughs> if it sells, it's a plus, but I really do enjoy it. So when I'm drawing something that I don't enjoy, you're probably going to look at that thing and you will know right away, oh, how did, how is that existing right there? What, what was the person feeling? You know, it's going to translate in there at any time. So you have to get your mind right at all times when you're drawing and painting because that is going to live on and you want to... Um, I have destroyed some of my own art. Felt really bad to do, but have you? Yeah, I'm. I actually, I have a painting that I'm thinking about destroying right now. <laughs> it feels so bad. You know the the big square that's in the garage with the girl with the crown. No. Yeah, it's very nice. Well, that's like a multi billion dollar <laughs> Da Vinci right there. You don't. No. <laughs> you see, you don't realize you could give it to somebody who would appreciate it and then they would treasure it. It it's not ruined. It's in your mind. Um whatever translated in that one, it's so nice. It's like street art. It's like a giant hieroglyphic message to the world. Like this lady is dynamic with the with the laser lights and the yeah. It, it works. It still works. I, I look at it all the time. Yeah. I wouldn't destroy it. Well, it was mostly because the photographer didn't want me to sell that after she saw the painting. So I was like, well, all right. I mean, I could paint over, but it's in oils and I don't want to start a painting in oils. So, um, What I would say is that uh, when you're getting creative and you want to keep it going, just don't ever let it stop. It's like this giant river leading to the ocean. The creative river is bringing you there, and that's where all the ideas are. And you're not going to run out of ideas unless you go on dry land into the desert and there's no rivers. And there. But you don't want to go to the desert. Maybe some do. <laughs> I escaped special I was, things you can find in the desert. <laughs> I was living in the desert 20 years. <laughs> I lived through it. But you get a dry nose, and you wake up, and your eyes are itchy, and... Yeah. Florida's way better. I was more like wheezy. <laughs> now, now I'm freezing. Now you're freezy. <laughs> I was wheezy. DJ Wheezy J. <laughs> Dreezy. Dree dry. Okay. So now what I'm saying is that the kind of questions you ask sometimes, they could go a number of ways. So I like to be real direct and answer to the point. And that's what really? I normally do. Okay. <laughs> That's exactly what I gathered um, from this conversation. <laughs> I should make the the questions more open ended so that John has more freedom to explore. <laughs> no, I I love it though. I think it's fun. Um, it's a lot of fun. Just it's like um, it's like one of your drawings, you know, like the conversation. You we don't have a source to start out starting out with, you know, like. 
And even if we thought we had a source, it's way different. <laughs> In a good way. <laughs> hmm. Well, most people like to use a source. But what if you uh, did a study and you took 100 artists and you said make art without a source? I know, yeah. You have to do stuff like that because if if people enjoy the source so much, they may it may be a crutch where you, you, that's the only way you can get things done. Do you think it's harder for, like it's harder to teach beginner stuff as you've gotten more and more advanced? Good question. No. Really? I, I just, I imagine that like, the further you get away from the start, the harder it is to relate. It might appear that way, <laughs> but I don't feel that. Okay, let's go back to the beginner question then. <laughs> now, we're ch now it's a challenge. If I, like, let's say I suck at drawing out of my head, where do I start? You're going to have to use that noggin. <laughs> Okay. The imagination is, is there for you at all times. It's ready and it's within you there. So somehow if the fire hasn't been put out, I mean, nobody has the fire completely put out. I mean, they might appear that way sometimes, but uh, you're, you're going to have the divine inspiration. So you just start off with some figures, some circles, some shadows under the circle. Just do 10 of those. You're going to say, what's behind those cannonballs? What's there? You just start building things to make it on a page. And you try to push yourself to do subjects that might appear interesting. So you're, you're going to have to decide what you want as your final image. Hmm. And you're going to have to visualize it with your mind on the page before you do it in every detail and then go about filling in the blanks like a motor. Your hand has to be like a motor. It can't stop until you get it done. You have to do cross hatching, shading, light sources. But this all comes with time, maybe with discipline. So if you don't have any discipline and you don't stay with it, it might appear impossible. That but is the well building said. blocks, you just keep on using little building blocks. If you only did it one time per day in your morning, when you're waking up, when your mind is still um, just awakening, you might have a certain look. But if you went right before bed and then you did one, you're going to have a different kind of a look. So I used to be addicted to watching TV and I used to watch every show like Gilligan's Island, Family Feud, every show there was on TV, I was that's all I had. Didn't have really parents around that much. So I've just had my papers to draw and I had all these lame shows going and I've just get in this drawing world and I, I just made stacks of drawings. I had so many, I don't know where they went, but it allowed me to never be bored. I, I had outside sounds, I had different things. I had peanut butter, I didn't have much, but I kept dreaming, maybe I'll have something more than peanut butter one day. <laughs> um, it sounds like really it it's so important to develop the foundational skills, like not just, and also set your expectations according to how much time you're actually willing to put into developing your craft. Because... If you want to draw like you, it takes years and years and years. No one can just get to that level of mastery. You might think that. Well, without actually, you know, putting in a lot of effort. Okay. You know, like you have to, like you can, anyone can get there for the most part. You yeah. Get some of these basic building blocks down. Mm -hmm. You can really go far now because technology has gone a long way. You can get your idea out really fast. But I love the organic way so much more. So that's why I share it so often. And what it, the water soluble graphite, it allows you to make a mess, use your eraser, get in there. You pull something out in a few seconds. You could have a very realistic portrait. You could have 
I mean, charcoal dust with a big brush, dry brush, you can get things down really fast now. Hmm. And those are ancient techniques that are still being used. Yeah. Some people love projectors. Some people love their real source. They got to have their photography. They got to have, you know, um, I see some people just in a giant warehouse with hundreds of large paintings around. And I wonder where are they going? There's hundreds, maybe thousands of these warehouses all across the world. Wow. What do you do when you're not feeling creative? <laughs> Or how do you overcome creative block? I just go in the corner and cry (laughs) all the time. I get so down. I I, nobody should see me when I'm so low. Oh, it's the worst. I don't know how I survive these times. It is where everything is. I could just, I could just go at any moment. I don't know. Uh, (laughs) It's like. You you work so hard and you want everything to be so right. But then if you just realize, just getting in the act of that, making that part of your life, um, it means a lot to other people. It's not only you. It means a lot. So you, you're you going to have those moments, but you got to go through them because there is tacos <laughs> out there somewhere. But really, because why? The reason why? <laughs> you just have, you have to, to survive. You have to go through it because... If you, if you stop being creative, you're going to watch time go by for a long while and you have to get back in the river. You think it's cold. You don't want to go down the ski slope. You think it's too steep. You're going to... But you get back on because the the joy of the whole thing. So what do you do... When you need to overcome creative block. Okay, good one. I have to visualize what is going to be interesting for others. Even though I have heard it from many other artists and writers and knowledgeable scientists of the land and gurus and mountaintop shrubs and various hermits in shells, what I've heard is that you must make it for yourself. Okay, good. But then what what am I going to do with a big stack of paintings? I need it to go to home. So I want it to be both. I want it to be me and for someone else. So I'm interested to know what's sellable, what's fun. So that's why I disagree with that a little bit. I mean, I don't say like David Bowie is not brilliant, but they will all come back to the thing that you got to do it for yourself. And you, but that's built in. That's already, it is for yourself. You're having fun. You're doing, you get to do art. So that's, it, it, it's important. You, you can't spend time being without ideas because it's forbidden. It's not allowed. The ideas are, there's so many. So at least you can make a small one. You can make something small. Don't limit yourself too much. I mean, you could say, I'm having a block today. And then the next day comes, I'm having a block today. But isn't that boring? That's boring. (laughs) What if you just made art right through the block and you just keep on smushing it around and then you put some squiggly eyeballs on there and look like a chocolate ice cream cone with two eyeballs on it. And then it was a winner. Put some candy sprinkles on top. No. <laughs> Throw it in a in a tree. Yeah. It's growing roots. Yeah, what's that? It's the icon. There's stars above over the Maybe head. it'll be turned into an icon one day. What if you did a whole um or a crest? Hundred hundred painting challenge of icons. It's like a Porsche crest and then you, you set gold for yourself and you put a check mark on the box. And then you just watch, you will be out of that rut. So if you're in the mud and your car is stuck, you put some pieces of lumber underneath that in the mud. I've even had to do it in the snow. Uh, you, you, you can still get yourself out of that rut. What's the lumber though in this situation? If you're in the desert and you don't have any lumber, then what? <laughs> what if you're out in the snow and you can't get out of the snow and your car's in deep snow? You could put a jacket. Down. So you start just thinking, if I 
go in the car and get a big flame torch. I can melt the ice. I don't know. You can think of something. Set the car on fire. Okay. So <laughs> you got to think outside the box. You got to come up with solutions. That's why I'm always thankful when the angels come along and help me out of the rut. If you're having a creative block, basically just set the car on fire. Not exactly. <laughs> Disregard that advice. <laughs> you, you could start by just making really miniature drawings. You could sketch some pretty funny stuff. I used to make bar characters and I'd try to make them as ugly as possible. I got all these characters and, go, and I still go back to that. I, I like making those things. I don't know why. Why do you think people say that you should just create art for yourself? That would be because they think it's okay for you to not be successful. That's the bottom line. They won't argue that point. That's Yeah, that's a good point. Why do you think so many people are appalled when other people... Crabs in a barrel. That's a good point as well. I've heard of this. The name of the spirit was called Onicha or something. It's like Oancha. I heard about this name and I was joking with the guy, the political guy. And he, he said, Oancha spirit. And then and then I was saying, whoa, I don't want you to get out of the barrel because... <laughs> It was, it was getting real heavy in the conversations, which it's fun. I, I enjoy it. And then, so there is a poverty spirit trying to take away creativity, but people think it's good to be lowly and all this. And actually it would be better to not be that lowly because you could inspire kids. You could help other people to not be lowly and there you would just do the best you can. You don't have mm -hmm. to meet yourself up and be sad that you're not super productive. So when I get in those moments and I don't have that much creativity happening, I, I see if I, any sparks are coming out. Where's the sparks? I got to keep the fire going. Um, I go outside and I take sticks and I get them very dry and I do this to make a fire. Um, uh, I just get the charcoal out and I smush it in my hands and I smush it around and then I uh, make some things that are highly unusual just to get some shapes out and then change them around. Uh, but I, I, it's very rare. It's, it's, there are some people who have all the paint materials, but they just don't put any time in. They're sitting there looking at the canvas and they're just looking. And what can I say to help? You have to make the effort. And if one person says, it's it's okay, you don't have to make the effort. You're going to listen to that sound? I mean, what's the other effort? Like, you can make 10 already. You've been sitting there. You could have made 10 pieces. You know, people say that to me. So then uh, push yourself, try to make 10 in one day. Okay? We have told people to do 100 in one day. And it's not even impossible. And That's when you true. do it, something something sparks from there. You cannot help it. You will have, you will have a good idea. And making those marks, you get kid like. You have to think back like a kid before someone shouted to you, "Oh, don't do it that way." You have to think back, and you get to hold on to that thought forever. Use it whenever you want. I, I do tell people to do thirty three if they can't do a hundred day. Do 33 then. That's what I did. I did 33 tired. per day. Three, three days. Physical limitations. It's hard to carve out like six or seven hours in one day though, you know? And by the end of it, you're like, whoa, I'm tired. <laughs> and you can be. Actually, after one of the sessions, I felt so energized. But then one of them, I was like, yeah, but like I, the settings I started are just, just right. lose out, lose ideas. and yeah, yeah, you have to make yourself do it. Now, you're just going to have to use materials in a different way. Mm -hmm. So each time... There's going to be a little bit of rules to it. You got to make a mess. You got to keep the thing happening. Uh, use all the colors you never used before. Take all your paints, squeeze them, find places to mm. put them out. 
And so then you think, I don't have much money to spend on all that stuff, but I know you could do it because you take a brown paper bag, you go to someone's house and they might have 100 paper bags. You cut out that brown paper. It's like perfect to paint on. You put house paint on it. Look at that. You get a surface right there. It could be framed up. So out of those 100 squares that you make, you might have a few winners in there. Pick a winner. <laughs> um, call, I, me I, up. I, call me up later and say thanks. I want to go back to the concept that you were talking about before of like, you know, the crabs in a bucket and people not wanting you to be successful. I think part of it too is that once some people – achieve a certain level of success, they're afforded the luxury of thinking, I don't care about money. Like, I just want to do it for myself, right? I do agree with you that it's good to get the paintings out of the house anyways. <laughs> like, you want, to have, you want to have your art in other people's homes. Like, why should you, why do you want to have a stack of 500 paintings in your own home? You're not even going to look through all of it, right? Well, like, it, Well, it's still valuable. I, I love it. I do like having big stacks. <laughs> but <laughs> the thing is that when you put them up on the walls and you look at them for a while and you could see, yeah, this these all need to, they need to go somewhere where people can enjoy it. If you're enjoying it so much, I mean, so you're part of the process no matter what. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be, you didn't make them completely for someone else. You just, you made it for yourself but you also made it for others. That's where I I, I want to be real at all times. So I'm saying I don't want to only do it for only myself. Mm. It's not that I'm made differently from everyone else. I think we all want to show, look what I made. We want to share what we made. If someone else is enjoying it and they got it for themselves, did they get it as an investment? Did they get it to show off to others? To, you never know what that's going to be like. I think the act of creating is for yourself, but the art itself is for the collector. And that's sort of what you're saying. But this this topic is so interesting because it could go forever and ever. I mean, what sells the most? Birds. Sweet birds. Sweet birds. Wait, do birds really sell the most? Sweet birds and trees. <laughs> trees. It's actually, surprise, <laughs> artists, um, cheese actually sells the best. <laughs> And then you, you're serving a plate of cheese and you're... Charcuterie. Yes. <laughs> but, I, you know, I think it's, it's really easy for people once they've gotten to that place of success. Like, okay, let me back up. I think sometimes it can be dangerous to take the advice of people who've reached a very high level of success and what they're doing when they got, when they are successful, because it's more valuable to look at the path that got them to that success. Like when you're at a place where you don't have a lot of money and, but you want to be an artist, I think the best way out of negativity is to learn how to create in a way that you can make more money so that you don't have to do the job. If you wanted to start out and you wanted to make art that did sell, you would have to still put your heart into it in order for it to sell. Yeah. No, they're but not being mutually at the right exclusive. place at the right time. You don't exactly know where to show it or, or market it or everything because it, real estate has gone sky high. Everything has gone sky high. So the value of art now is more important than ever. So don't lose hope because you, you can find the winning ideas. They're still within you and it's going to feel really good when you get those ideas out. You're celebrating with your friends and you're going to see that it was worth it because other things don't give this much joy. You could try a lot of other things, but this one seems to give the most Hmm. When when you're pursuing it, I mean, say, if you're only surfing and you're getting the best waves and getting the best rides and you're not crushing the competitions around you, but you're you're functioning at the highest level in your sport, then you're, you're going to love thinking it. about the competition, you know? There is no competition. You still want to honor right. the ocean, honor the, the humans around the ocean, 
So there's a lot of different factors to it. So some people, they like to paint portraits. Do you love portraits? I do, yeah. I like the subtle nuances of human expression. Does the idea of every man, every woman, is that a important look that you have to strive for? Because how are you going to pick the every man, the every woman? Uh, are there more paintings of men than women out in the land? It's hard to say. It's hard for me to have a clear perspective on that because so many of the people that I know paint women more. I mean, we just know a lot more. I know a lot more women artists, so. How about paintings of babies? Pretty rare. How about a couple hundred years ago? Not that rare. <laughs> I'm just imagining men, women, babies all flying around and someone said, just keep making them fly, more of them, more of them. So you have these 70-foot paintings, lots of people flying around, things are spilling everywhere, they're naked. But you have to think, how did they come up with that? And I want them right next to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> put, put it all in that painting, it has to be there too. <laughs> now roll up that scroll and get on your stage coach and watch out for robbers. This has been a really interesting conversation, John. I don't know, I mean, for me, the key takeaway is that it's not so important to think so linearly. Like you can just break outside of constructs. You can ignore rules completely or live according to rules or both. All that really matters is that you create and that you just keep creating and you don't let your arm stop moving. <laughs> You don't let your pencil stop moving. Keep your arms and legs in the vehicle at all times. <laughs> but and you train. let your mind go wild. <laughs> so if you love abstract thinking, then you're probably also going to love creating abstract paintings. Um, and who better to teach you how to create an abstract painting and even better, a sellable abstract painting than John Milan himself. So if you wanna learn how to create a sellable abstract painting, then you should just check out this video right here.